Hello ladies and gents, and the name of the game is Tagonist, where the old Ironsides crew would take any two things and set one as the protagonist and the other as the antagonist, and make up a story to see who comes out on top. Today we have Vibrations versus an Alligator. I hope you enjoy. In the depths of a marsh, the animal populace grew fed up with the mosquitoes. After hundreds of years worth of stories about their vampiric nature, the animals were hungry, thirsted for revenge. They lost their blood to the mosquitoes' ravenous appetites and their sanity from the mosquitoes' incessant whining. A meeting was called and all the animals, save for the alligator, convened. The birds had a wondrous idea. Sure, they hunted the mosquitoes along with the dragonflies, but they too lost blood. None of the other animals were into taking direct revenge and consuming the insect blood. So, the birds thought, why not exact revenge through sound? The animals nodded in agreement. Mosquitoes drink blood. That was understandable. They needed it to survive. But did they have to plague their victims further by whining in their ears? The animals cheered as the wren stirred them with his sensible words. With our blaring cries and a chant from the Sora, we can bombard the Mosquito Queendom with one fell swoop. The animals murmured their preparedness and rose in volume as the wren lifted his wings and started his call. The other animals followed so quickly as the Sora made his chant beside the wren. The sounds bunched together, whirling into a ball larger than that of the wren. When the process was complete, the air hummed with their combined calls. Go forth, vibrating ball, and rupture the mosquito queendom! The convened animals gave one more collective roar like a silent eruption as the ball took their cries and added to its own strength before exiting the grounds to fulfill its duty. The ball rushed toward where the mosquitoes called home, sloshing stagnant water and rattling tree branches before a guttural call blocked its path and sent it careening back. The ball searched around only to find one large alligator laying in the water. The sound ball tried to move forward again, only to be knocked back once more. Excuse me, the ball said, using the many voices of those that created it to verbalize its message. There was no response, only another guttural call from the alligator. Excuse me, you are blocking my way, said the ball. The alligator looked up from its spot in the water and opened its massive jaws to reply. Why should I care if I'm blocking your path? You are not natural and have no purpose in our world. You are mistaken. I come from the animal convention where they made me to exact their revenge on the mosquitoes. That makes no difference to me. My hide isn't pestered by those creatures very often. Besides, I'm calling for a mate. I am a busy creature and need to pass on my blood to the next generation. In fact, you are stunting my call. What difference does that make to me? Your love calls are of no importance to my mission. The ball rushed forward only to be flung again by the gator's mating call. You are sound personified. Why not just pass through my call? The gator bellowed again, sending ripples through the water. You did not make me, so I can neither pass through nor collect your sound. Tough, the gator said. The gator called out several more times before the ball procured a response. You're right. That is tough for you. See, I can go on forever, as you said. I am not natural, and I can stunt your call so much so that you don't find a mate this season. Taken aback by the threat, the gator leered at the sound ball. You wouldn't. I would. Of course, you could let me through. Why not go around? The spell makes it so I can only go in a straight line. Fine. You get your wish. The gator lowered its head in the water to let the ball through. The ball passed over then made a small, distorted laugh. I can't last forever. I only have the strength I was given at the start. Then I'm done. The gator bellowed once more and sent the ball into the mosquito queendom. There, the ball realized, from the chewed parts laying on the ground, the dragonflies lied and raided the queendom the day before, leaving no survivors. The ball realized the dragonfly's sinister plan, but took it to its final resting place. With it, for, without a mission, the ball faded into silence. 
Thank you so much for watching episode one of Tagonist. If you like this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and share it. If you really like the story but you want something more serious, I have two short stories and a novelette available for purchase on Amazon. Links will be in the description below. Now thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.